Do you have a space in your home that you're tired of, but you haven't made any changes because you just can't decide what you want? Well, for me, that space was my foyer, a room that I had wanted to make over for a very long time. And so I decided to let an artificial intelligence tool make all the design decisions for me. And this experiment is going to blow your mind. I know some people are hesitant when it comes to using artificial intelligence. However, if you have ever used Google Maps, Netflix, Facebook, Amazon, Siri, Alexa, even a robotic vacuum, then you've already used AI software. For my four-year makeover, I use an AI app called ChatGPT. And it's important to note that ChatGPT sometimes makes mistakes, so it should not be considered a tried and trusted source. Still, I thought it would be great fun to see how ChatGPT would redecorate my foyer. So if you are ready for this, let's get started. If you're not familiar with ChatGPT, it's an artificial intelligence app that uses a vast amount of information to answer your questions. So I asked it if it could help me decorate my foyer, and it responded, of course. And it gave me five suggestions, which I'll be incorporating throughout the video. So here's what my foyer looked like a week ago. The main wall is wallpapered in a gray and white branch pattern, and the other walls are painted in a light gray color to coordinate with the wallpaper. The floors are a creamy travertine tile, and the doors and trim are all painted in a creamy white color too. Most of the decor is either white or gray with a little blue thrown in, and the stairwell features a gallery wall of bird prints that I've collected over the years. I'm definitely tired of all the gray and white, so my next question for ChatGPT was, what color should I paint my foyer? It gave me five suggestions. Two of them were gray, one was white, and sea salt was very similar to the color I already had. So that left me with accessible beige. It also mentioned the importance of lighting, so I asked it if accessible beige was a good option for a room with diffused northern light. The answer was yes, so accessible beige it is. Don't you just wish you could snap your fingers and your walls would be painted? I know I do, but I had quite a bit of prepping to do before I could even get out my painting supplies. I needed to take down all those bird pictures and the nails holding them. I also needed to remove the wallpaper. Luckily for me, it came right off, and that's because it was peel and stick wallpaper. Thank goodness. As I washed down the walls, I realized that there was still dried wallpaper paste on the wall from the previous wallpaper that I took down when we first moved into this house. Next, I removed all the nails and screws and spackled the holes, and when the spackle was dry, I sanded over those spots with some fine grit sandpaper. Since there was no way I was going to be able to get that ancient wallpaper paste off the wall, I applied a coat of Zenser Guards. This is a great product that provides a smooth surface by sealing over problem areas, like old wallpaper paste. I wanted to use an accent color on this wall, so I asked for a suggestion that would look good with accessible beige. Once again, it gave me five options. I liked the idea of using navy blue, so I asked if Anchors Away would be a good paint color, and it said yes. So I think I'm ready to pull out my painting supplies. So here is how my upstairs hallway looks with the accessible beige paint. It looks so much better than the bluish gray paint that was here. 
and it coordinates really well with my wallpaper mural and decor. my channel then you already know that I am all about creating a beautiful home without spending a lot of money and that includes cleaning supplies that's why I'm so excited today to tell you about blue land with traditional cleaning products you're paying for the plastic bottle it comes in which ends up in the trash but with Blue Land, you reuse your forever bottle and just pay for the refill tablets, which only cost $2.25. Just fill the bottle with warm water, drop in the tablet, and it's ready to use in minutes. I have the cleaning essentials kit, which includes a bathroom cleaner, glass cleaner, multi-surface cleaner, and foaming hand soap. I use the glass and all-purpose cleaners almost every day, and honestly, they work as well or better than the expensive brands I used to buy. So if you want to try Blue Land's eco and budget-friendly products, click the link in the description box and you'll get 15% off your first kit. In addition to painting an accent wall, I also wanted to add some architectural detail. This time, ChatGPT gave me six suggestions. The first option was crown molding, which I already have in my foyer. So I selected option two, wainscoting. However, to make it a little easier, I decided to install paintable wallpaper with just a few pieces of wood trim. First, I cut my wallpaper into lengths that were just a few inches longer than I needed them to be and then I used a level to mark a line on the wall where I wanted the wallpaper to start. This was pre-pasted wallpaper, so before adhering it to the wall, I dipped each strip into cold water and then folded the back sides over onto themselves. Then I used a brush and a plastic scraper to smooth the paper out, removing any wrinkles. Then I used that same plastic scraper as a guide to cut the excess wallpaper off the bottom. I just used a cheap utility knife, but I did break off the blade and start with a fresh one for each strip of wallpaper. When working with pasted wallpaper, it's really important that you wipe away any of the excess paste while it's still wet because once it's dry, you may not be able to get it off. If you've never wallpapered before, papering an accent wall like this is a good project for beginners. You just need to make sure that you line up your seams as you work your way across the wall. Also, if you selected a paper with a repeating pattern, you'll need to make sure to match your pattern up too, which is not hard, it just takes a little longer. I decided to go ahead and paint the wall in my selected accent color, Anchors Away, before adding any of the wood trim. When painting, I like to use a good quality angled brush to paint around doorways and windows and along the baseboards and the ceiling edge. And then I fill in using a microfiber roller I like to use a small roller above doorways and to get into smaller spaces, but you definitely want to use a nice big roller as much as you can to make the job go faster. It took two coats and when the paint was dry, I was ready to add the wood trim. I bought one eight foot length of MDF chair railing, which cost me less than $10. I lined it up on my wall and marked with a pencil where I needed to cut and then took it outside to cut it on my miter saw. Since I was working by myself, I held the chair rail in place covering the top of the wallpaper and put a nail in the middle. Then I leveled it out before nailing the two ends. You'll have to let me know if you think I should have painted the chair rail in accessible beige or to match the other wood trim. 
However, I painted it in anchors away to match the wall because I wanted a more understated look, at least for now. I bought two eight-foot pieces of some very inexpensive thin flat wood trim, which I nailed over the wallpaper's seams, using a level to make sure they were straight. I also added one piece to the small section of wall to the left of the living room doors, and then I painted them in the same navy anchors away paint. Now that the walls were done, I went back to chat GPT to see what accent colors it would recommend for my wall decor. It gave me three suggestions. I didn't think I wanted any more blue, so I decided I would use both tricorn black and urbane bronze. I thought the urbane bronze would look really nice on this distressed gray mirror, so I purchased a sample. Even though Sherwin-Williams samples are not of the same quality as their regular paint, I like to use them because they're much cheaper and they work just fine on items that get little or no wear. To highlight the pretty details on the mirror, I dry brushed just a tiny bit of gold wax over the wooden appliques and then wiped away the excess for a very subtle effect. Remember that initial list of foyer suggestions? Well, Mir was one of them, so now on to the artwork. Rather than buying a sample of tricorn black, I figured I could cheat just a little bit and use black chalk paint to update some of the frames on my bird prints. When creating a gallery wall, I like to play around with the arrangement on the floor before I start putting nails in the wall. But to be honest, I always make some changes, which results in at least a few unnecessary nail holes. Mirror check mark, artwork check mark, onto the furniture. There's a bench in my foyer that I recently repaired and upholstered that I wanted to keep. I also wanted to keep this vintage cabinet, but the distressed white paint needed an update. Chat GPT suggested three paint colors that would coordinate well with my other color choices but two of them were gray, and I am so tired of gray, so sea salt seemed like the best option. I gave my cabinet a good cleaning with some liquid sandpaper, and then I gave it two coats of the sea salt paint. I was hoping and expecting the paint to look greener than it did. Honestly, I just think it looks white, or grayish white. But I'm sticking to my experiment and I'm not going to repaint it, at least not for a while. I didn't tape off the glass this time because sometimes it's just easier to scrape off the paint with a razor blade after it dries. Okay, three out of five done. On to the lighting. I currently have an all glass chandelier, which I still like, but I was ready for something new. And because I didn't want another glass chandelier, I asked ChatGPT what metallic chandelier would look best. And I wasn't surprised that it suggested bronze or brass, because that's what I would have chosen anyway. Since I'm not an electrician, I'm not going to show you how to change out a light fixture. I will say that I always turn off the circuit breaker before doing anything. And I always cross my fingers when I flip it back on, hoping that I did everything correctly. That's always a relief when it turns on. Okay, one item left on my list, a rug. Once again, when prompting ChatGPT, I mentioned my paint colors and asked, 
what rug colors would look good in my foyer. The answer was pretty broad, so I followed up with a specific question about the colors that I like, red and blue. ChatGPT said those colors could look good and gave me some suggestions like choosing a rug with a balanced distribution of red and blue. I chose this rug, which I like, but I may return it because I think ChatGPT is right. I think it needs more blue and less red. The original list generated by ChatGPT was complete, but my foyer still needed some small table decor and accessories. When asking ChatGPT about accessories, I first let it know that I prefer decor in a traditional vintage style. I was somewhat surprised by its answer. I tried to include several of the items and colors that ChatGPT suggested using items that I already owned, particularly focusing on adding antique gold with touches of burgundy green and ivory. Well, I'm all done, and I can't wait to read your comments to see what you think. Thank you so much for watching and I would love to know your thoughts on this for your makeover. And if you enjoy videos like this, here's another video I think you may like. Music